Thank you. Thank you for your evidence here today. Um, can you give uh, me some commentary around the impact of the alternative delivery model on service delivery in rural and regional communities in Victoria? Yeah. Um, thanks for your, your question, Senator. Um, look, as the, the, the committee is aware, there were um, a number of exclusions in regional Australia um, for the rollout of the ADM, and it was Excuse only supposed me, to. Can you, if you guys want to have a ch have a chat behind. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Thank you. It was only supposed to happen in regional. Um, uh, areas in Australia. I think you've heard evidence already yep. that that's not the case. Um, uh, the, the one standout exclusion for us, I suppose, in Victoria was in Geelong, hmm. um, that previously was classed as regional, uh, was then rechanged some years later to, to Metro, and um, even though we requested Australia Post to sort of acknowledge Geelong is, is it a regional area, um, they refused. They just wanted to roll out in the ADM in as many places as possible. Uh, don't the Bendigo, Ballarat, for instance, you see more, um, Gippsland, um, still five day a week delivery, but there obviously has been problems with in processing areas with, with getting mail out there. So we don't doubt that there's been delays in regional areas as well due to the ATM. Uh, we just can't provide specifics on that, Senator. Um, yeah, I thought the um, classification rules deemed that if uh, a community was 100,000, population 100,000 or more, it um, is classified as metro, and I would think that Bendigo's grown a lot since. Yeah, I, I don't think that, sorry to correct you, that's Senator, fine. but I, I don't think that that's the case with Geelong because there was moves made by the previous CEO, I remember, to reduce mail services in regional Victoria. He, he, I think he used the terminology at the time as over-servicing the customer, which um, we thought was an odd thing for a CEO to be saying. Um, but just on that, so, so Geelong was, was, I think, going to be affected by that, and there was some arrangements made with Australia Post to then class Geelong as Metro, I think, so that the mail from... Hang on, sorry. We heard so evidence earlier on that. about this is actually a 1991 census guide. Not This is not a decision of Australia Post. The, the, I'm just giving Senator my recollection of what happened at the time when the previous CEO reduced the mail standards. And I know that there was some changes made at the time to Geelong status. I don't think Geelong... At, at that time were classed as, as metro, which under the 91 service of over 100,000, they would have been. They're actually classed as regional at the time. So um, I can't say, Senator, how them two points well, contradict yes, I, each other. When Hang Mr for her at the time Senator did McKenzie's try to... Senator got the call. Yeah, thank you, Well, Chair. I'm just clarifying really this is the area it. that I represent, but uh, certainly at the well, time Mr for her... As Victorian Senator. Mr Fahor did brought. try to, yeah. to peel yeah, that back. Well, and, not uh, really. We had a very not good really. fight. All right. The Could more I, please, you that... I have one last question. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the call. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Australia Post announced that they would be halting um, postage of perishable goods, having severe impacts for rural and regional producers who depend on Australia Post. This was supposed to be something that came in in March. They announced a couple of weeks ago that it was going to be implemented in June. They've now done a backflip. Can I ask, um, were your, was your union consulted around the perishable goods? Because one of the highlights that Australia Post made about implementing this particular policy was that it was the difference of state regula health regulations, etc. cetera. Yeah, um, OK. Yeah, thanks, Senator. Um, yeah, look, no consultation whatsoever, but that's not unusual. Um, and if there was consultation, it would have only been Australia Post coming to us and saying this is a done deal, it's a fait accompli. And if lucky, we may have been able to tinker around the edges. Um, but no, they didn't consult. The first we heard of it was media reports um, coming out of Tasmania. The ABC, Ta Tasmania. Tasmania, yeah, was the first place. Um, uh, we spoke to some of our members in regional areas. I know one of our members has, has got a sister who, like, is a boutique, you know, um, 
boutique's the wrong word. Organic um, cheese producer <laughs> and boutique. God, then. Organic's no longer boutique. I, 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 <laughs> it's quite mainstream. <laughs> That's my biggest faux pas of the year. Um, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, but uh, again, as, 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 as Levi has identified in, in his opening statement, it, it's an example of the short-sighted thinking of Australia Post senior executives. They don't want to grow the organisation. They don't want to grow the business. They don't want to move into new areas because it's all too hard and you need an imagination to do that and some forward thinking. And a lot of them are just... Let's face it, just based on their, their, their short-term bonus incentives. And well, reflections on, on the board years. and the management aside, um, part of the BCG's report's focus was on the growth of e-commerce opportunities. I would have thought organic cheesemakers uh, would be celebrating themselves at, and Australia Post's partnership in growing both their businesses and providing additional um, parcel deliveries for, for Australia Post. Do you think these... Um, this decision and then backflip by um, Australia Post is as a result of the BCG advice that was supposed to inform the strategic direction of I, Australia I, Post? I, I think so, Senator. I, I think it's, it's, a, it's a number of factors. Obviously, there's, there's been a huge spotlight shine upon Australia Post. Um, let's face it and be frank, by the previous CEO, uh, insights that we've never seen before. And the Boston Consultant Group is, is part of that. Uh, I, I think in the, the summary I've seen, we've only seen the executive summary, it, it talks and refers to services, extra services being somehow risky. Just to be clear, too Mr. Risky. Nier, you've too seen, risky. You've only seen that because of what it was tabled in the, yeah, to yeah. this committee. Yeah, we only seen it when it, when it was actually tabled, mm -hmm. when, when it went online. I was yes. continuously okay. checking, yeah. Thank you. We, thank uh, you, Senator Chair. Henry